Tonight, it's Google I.O. and Android is everywhere. Plus, the Supreme Court tells Aereo, no. And police now need search warrants for cell phone data. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 116 for Wednesday, June 25th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,400 high-quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2. I'm Sarah Lane, and today's top story is... Facebook's app Slingshot, now available worldwide. Just kidding. That's not our top story. It's Google I.O. Developer Conference, of course, which kicked off this morning in San Francisco. And here, this is actually pretty special to discuss all the fun in studio. My very first in-studio guest is the one and only Jeff Jarvis, also host of This Week in Google. So who could be better? Great to be here. Well, great to have I'm you. Delighted to be on this exciting show. I know it's show. been it's a great. really long day for you. It started early, so we really appreciate right. it. So, all right, I guess my question for you is, you, 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 you think about Google, you, you host a show about Google, what, was, what were you going into this morning with the expectations of? They probably set the expectations a little high last year because Larry Page spoke and talked about building islands with new cultures and, and, <laughs> and they had all kinds of products and they, they gave away a $1,500 laptop, which, which I bought this one, I want it known, but I mm -hmm. love my laptop. And, and so this year, it wasn't about all that stuff. It wasn't about new uh, hardware and products. It wasn't about big pronouncements about the earth. It was about developing the platforms more and making them work better. And I think they did that. They did that in spades. I, I think that they, they are trying to operate under some principles here. And, and first and foremost is that mobile wins everything. Mm -hmm. um, this is your primary device. It happens to work with other devices. I'm not sure that'll be permanently the case, but I think that's one important principle. I think we saw uh, Android and Chrome have been have been dueling. Yeah. I think two things happen. Android has won. It's, it's the big one. But Android and Chrome are also more integrated now, and they both matter. Uh, so, for example, on your phone, you'll get a mix of your recent activities from web pages and applications. Um, I think you'll also see that uh, Google worked very hard to make things operate across all platforms. So now you, you download an app onto your phone. It will download at the same time onto your new wearable. This is not it yet, but I'll, I'll have one soon. Uh, you, the, the, <laughs> just a prop? Just a pin. <laughs> it's like a, a soon going to be obsolete into Best Buy device. with the TVs yes. that are hollow. Look cool, buy this one. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and so your two apps will sync. At the same time, you can take your, oops, uh, you can take your uh, Android apps and show them on your Chromebook. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you can use your Android to control your TV. At the same time, you can use Android to control and inform aspects of your car. And all of those things are going to be contextually aware. They know where you are and what you're doing and, and, and what matters to you. Google's use. very good at that. Google's very good at that. If you're willing to give them data, mm -hmm. right? You know, if you're willing to say where you live and where you work and where you're going right now, which I am because I get value back. Uh, I'm sure some of the European privacy people will go nuts about this. Oh my God, it operates against all these platforms. Yes. Google in the car. Well, you already have that. Um, on your so, so if you look at those principles, uh, I think that's important. I think that Google has really come along and shown how to build this open platform. And there were a few, you know, little swipes at Apple and, and at, at uh, Amazon as well, without mentioning them, as closed silos. Uh, Google's opening uh, up. And, and also, I think the growth. There's 100 million monthly connects on Android now. I mean, a billion, sorry, a billion. Uh, and that's huge. It's gigantic. And it's going to get much bigger, much faster, because they also announced a, a, an initiative with um, phone makers and, in turn, in phone companies in third world, or I should say developing world countries. Uh, Android One. Android One, which is a new initiative that will enable the phone to come out with full Android capability, full Android updates, Local software added for under a hundred dollars. Well, speaking of Android being everywhere, we also got a, a much closer look at Android L, which is still not technically a type of candy, but there are a lot of 
ideas. That was the big disappointment. They didn't tell us what the candy is. They should have told us that. I thought it was going to be lollipop, but who knows? I mean, I've been wrong before. But what do you think about Android L? We've got something called material design. It's a flattened look. That seems to be the trend, the design trend anyway. But besides cosmetic stuff, uh, there are um, trusted environments. That was something that that really stood out to me as if you are near enough to, let's say, a wearable device, your phone would be unlocked. If it goes far enough away, it wouldn't be. What do you think about those uh, enhancements, and do you feel like that's a good type of security? We've waited a long time for the next version of Android. I think that it has enough developments like the ones you just mentioned that it's, it's significant and it matters. Um, and so I'm looking forward to L. Uh, they also made an effort this time to tell the world about L about the next Android uh, much sooner than it's released so that the phone companies and developers have time to build for it, which is smart. And um, in terms of your actual question about, about the security, uh, I like that a lot. In fact, the way I'm thinking about it since this morning is that right now your primary computing device is this, is your phone. That's what we've gone to. We've gone from the laptop, from mm -hmm. the desktop to the laptop. Now we've gone over the edge, it's now the phone. This is the device that matters, this is what controls everything. But I don't think that's the last stop on this train. The phrase that really resonated with me today was uh, talking about the wearables. Now, computer, you can wear a computer on your body all day. Mm -hmm. So I, if you think about what will replace my watch here um, as a computer, also as your identity, also as your security, I think that changes where things go. So that your phone becomes a, an adjunct to that eventually. Right now the phone is the center, but in the long run, this will be your identity. And if, if I'm around with this on, that means you can unlock my phone, you can unlock my house, you can unlock my account, you can unlock what I say you should unlock because I'm here and guaranteed to be here. And I think it leads, you know, one of the problems we have with all these security breaches, uh, you know, security, credit card numbers have been breached. The fact that we have a transactional network that allows fraud to happen just because someone has a number on you, that's wrong. So, so moving to a device that you actually have guaranteed on you all the time, I think that's going to matter more. So uh, this is the beginning of something that's a big deal, I believe. Moving into the, the health sector, uh, Google announced, the product manager, Ellie Powers, announced uh, a single set of APIs for health products. So it's not like if you were to compare it to Apple's health app, that's not what Google's doing. They want to build something that's open source and, it, it, well, more open, I guess, for the whole development community. And then, of course, we have updates on Android Wear with, uh, with products from LG and Samsung uh, available today. The Moto version of the smartwatch will be available, I think they said, later this summer. What, what do you think is the perfect wearable for this ecosystem? Is there one? I, you know, a lot of it has been conceptual up to this point. I, I don't know that there's one. Uh, you know, I had the Nike fuel band and it broke, but it was really good while it lasted. I had the the the, the, the uh, Fitbit, the one that was recalled, and I lost it. Yeah, and you can't I washed one. mine once or twice. This is the um, the Shine, I think it's called the Misfit Shine, which is very nice and it's very. Sleek. Oh, that's a real. Watch. Oh, it's a real. No, it's a real. It's a real um, um, well, activity you're just tracker. Trying out the idea. No, it's an activity tracker. Very cool. And you, you double tap it, oh, and it will yeah. tell you that I haven't done enough today. Wow. Uh, and it'll shine the time. It's it's. These things are, are more single purpose and they get sure. replaced because we have sensors everywhere. So I think what obviously happens is you have sensors like Madden, your phone, but you may have that on you or not. Uh, if we can come up with good enough watch that has the sensors in it, that's where health goes. But you're, you're right to bring up Fit because I'm going to have multiple sensors. I'm going to have multiple activities. I'm going to do things like, you know, there was mention of a, a Leo mentioned today, a... Um, a, a basketball with a sensor in it. Mm -hmm. There's going to be sensors all around us. What we need is clearly APIs and standards for sharing the data across that and giving me control of my data. So that's what basically Google announced today was a, was a platform for doing that. And the fact that Nike is going to share its fuel platform and fuel is just to try to is trying to regularize the measurement of activity across running, walking, doing anything else. It's a fake currency of activity, kind of. But now Nike's giving that to this effort. So across whatever sensors you have, you should be able to collect your own data and analyze your own data and work with that. And you're gonna throw in other data, like what did you eat today? And things like that. So uh, fits just the first step. Rumors are that Apple's gonna do the same thing. We'll see where this goes, but I think that it's not gonna be about single silos. 
I watch uh, This Week in Google regularly enough to know that you have been quite openly critical of Google Glass. Were you surprised that there wasn't more emphasis on glass? More emphasis? They didn't even mention it. They didn't yeah. breathe <laughs> But Google they had glass. up to the... I, there, have, there have been quite a few announcements of advancements in Google Glass, I guess, leading up to the yes. conference. Do you think that's why? But they didn't make the stage. Yeah. Um, what I really think happened today, and Google Glass, I've always said, it, it's awkward, but it's, it's impressive in what it's tried to do. And uh, what I've always said is that Google Glass is to whatever comes later what the Newton was to the iPhone. Mm -hmm. So it's important. But I think that the wearable announcements today obsoleted Google Glass. I've long said on Twig that Google Glass has three functions. The first is to be able to record, take pictures of uh, your, your, what you see and share that. The second is to give you uh, alerts and updates. The third is to give you instructions or directions. Mm -hmm. Well, the last two are not gonna be on your wearables. And, and they're better on your wearables. They're better on being able to watch, look at your watch, I think, than trying to have this awkward little screen up here. Mm -hmm. The killer app that is Google Glass, a controversial one at that, is recording your world as you see it. To me, that becomes pretty simple. You put a little light on, on something on, on glasses that says, yes, I use that now so that the world doesn't get creeped out. And you make it a lot smaller and you make it communicate with your phone and, and these become a camera, I think full stop. I think the other function is a Google Glass that Google learned a lot about transfer to the wearables, in my view. So, I, yes, I think my glass, all $2,000 of it, is now obsolete. Last question about the uh, the show today. You're making a point, a good one, that our world is now, the Android world, the Google world is really, it's on our mobile device. How excited do you think people are to be able to, say, run Android apps on a Chromebook? Not very. I think that was just kind of thrown into the session today. But it was another indication of Android and Chrome coming together. And that, uh, and they're not separate worlds. And if you really like what's on your Android phone, you can get it not only on your Chromebook, but also on your TV. You can cast your, your phone to the TV. And, and I think that's important. So Android, if you like your Android, you can get it across anything. Now Chrome, they bragged about Chrome but mainly in terms of just rethinking mobile Chrome mm -hmm. and bringing those two things together. So Chrome still matters as a browser and Chrome still matters as an OS. They were bragging about the Chromebook and I have my beloved <laughs> Chromebook Pixel here. Uh, I've been using it nothing but for a year, unless I have to do Skype into here, which in which case I use my, my Mac. It has its limitations. Uh, it does, but, but it's, nice, in, it's incredible. Machine. I live in the cloud fully. Uh, high altitude, low oxygen, and <laughs> uh, and it works for me. So um, I, I think if, I think they're starting to find the peace between Android and Chrome here. Um, and the Chromebook itself, yeah, they laugh when we sat down on the keyboard. It's not a machine for everybody. Leo's right about that, and for all circumstances. But for education, for a lot of businesses, for salespeople out on the road, um, it's an incredible machine. For you, for grandparents who are going to be confused but understand how to do a browser, it's a great machine. For me, being on, I mean, I'm writing a book on it on the plane. It still works for me. Uh, you can get a nine hour battery life machine. Um, it works. There's a lot of development effort that goes into apps on Android, and that won't be lost now across all these other platforms. So, the principle, the design principle at work at Google here is a universality of connectivity across all these platforms, uh, along with context, along with um, just speed and other issues around Google. Jeff Jarvis, thank you so much thank for you. joining us. Thank you. I'm honored us. to be here. Honored to be the first in-studio guest. It was so fun. I love it. It's I got to have people in here more often. You should, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just like humans talking to humans. Bring out the champagne. Bring out the cookies. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, thanks so much. Thank and um, especially after a long day of, of, of Google absorption. Uh, Jeff, of course, is the uh, one of the wonderful host along with Leo and Gina Trapani of This Week in Google, which actually precedes um, Tech News Tonight at, let me see if I can get this right, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on Wednesdays. If you don't watch that show, you are missing out, folks. Thanks so much, Jeff. Let uh, folks know where they can keep up with your other work online. Uh, just buzzmachine.com, Twitter, Jeff Jarvis, and uh, you'll find me whether you want to or not. Excellent. Thanks, Thanks again. All right, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. If you want to boost your Excel skills, I have terrible Excel skills. I don't really know what I'm doing in Excel. Or learn the latest updates on Final Cut Pro X. 
Maybe you'd like to manage your photos in Lightroom. Lynda.com offers thousands of online video courses in software, creative, and business skills across a wide variety of subjects. With a subscription, members receive unlimited access to the entire course library. And that's a lot of courses. Lynda.com works with software companies to provide you updated training, often the same day that new versions hit the market. That means you always have the latest skills. You're not learning some, some outdated version of, of a software program. Experts are, are, are at the top of their field. The courses are produced at high quality. You're going to be watching something that's very visually impressive. This is not some homemade video with somebody who doesn't have good audio equipment. It's all very, very top quality stuff. And if you have 15 minutes, you can learn something. Or maybe you have 15 hours. You can certainly learn a lot of things. You can learn at your own pace on your own terms. It's only $25 a month for access to the entire lynda.com course library. Or for $37.50 per month, you can subscribe to the premium plan, which also includes exercise files. And here's the best part. You can try lynda.com right now with a free seven-day trial, completely free for an entire week. Visit lynda.com slash tn2 and access the entire library. That's over 2,400 courses. 2,400 courses free for seven days. I challenge you, get through all 2,400 or maybe 400. That's lynda.com slash TN and the number two. All right, now straight into the tech feed with some other top stories of the day. Let's start with some bad news for Aereo. The Supreme Court ruled against the TV streaming service today, effectively killing the model, at least as it exists now. In a 6-3 to three ruling, the court found that Aereo's service violates the Copyright Act by playing back recordings of broadcasters' TV shows. Aereo has always argued that it legally captures programs over the air and offers individual copies for each viewer, providing technology that its subscribers were renting in order to watch TV. Going forward, Aereo will likely have to pay licensing fees to broadcasters if it wants to continue operating, but that's an expensive addition for the company. They charge just $8 per month to users now. Earlier this year, Aereo CEO Chet Kanoja said in a statement following uh, the questions of wh whether they, or not they would continue that effectively they would die if this ruling came to be. Today, he said, quote, we've said all along that we worked diligently to create a technology that complies with law. But today's decision clearly states that how the technology works does not matter. This sends a chilling message to the technology industry. Broadcasters fighting with Aereo up to this point included Disney, NBC, Fox, and CBS. Even the White House chimed in and said Aereo was a threat to copyright. Supreme Court had other things to do today, though. They also ruled that police must almost always, almost always, obtain a warrant before searching mobile devices seized when arresting someone, extending constitutional privacy protections to the data Americans keep on their smartphones and their cell phones and other handheld uh, digital technology, which is obviously growing by the day. It was a unanimous ruling uh, delivered by Chief Justice John Roberts, who said both the quantity and the quality of information that are now contained in modern handheld devices is constitutionally protected from police intrusion without a warrant. Quote, modern cell phones aren't a techno technological convenience. That's coming from Chief Justice Roberts. And quote, with all they contain and all they may reveal, they hold for many Americans... The privacies of life. Moving on to some other news now. Amazon has been rumored to launch a local services marketplace this year. And now TechCrunch reports the company is rolling out a food takeout service described as a direct competitor to Grubhub, Seamless, and Delivery Hero. I haven't even heard of Delivery Hero, so obviously I'm behind. This is according to a source who apparently worked on the service at Amazon. If true, the offering is initially going to be part of Amazon Local, the company's Groupon-like service that offers people daily deals and coupons and discounts for merchants around where they live. Barnes & Noble will officially split its unprofitable Nook digital business from its consumer bookstores. Not a surprise. This has been hinted since, oh, back in 2012, but it's now happening. The split is expected to occur by next March and will make Nook Media a separate public company housing both Barnes & Noble's Nook eBook and eReader business along with its college stores. Nook's struggling retail store business is actually still profitable. The stores earned $354 million in fiscal Q4 of 2014. 
On the other hand, in those fiscal years through May, in the past two fiscal years through May, Nook's digital businesses lost about $700 million, which is almost equivalent to the profits of the consumer stores over the same period. They are now not as one. Finally, if you'd like to try out some of them fancy schmancy virtual reality headsets, but you just can't justify the price on most of those existing models, Google showed off an inexpensive solution following its I.O. keynote, Google Cardboard. True, an app that lets Android users transform their phones into VR headsets with a DIY type of cardboard viewer. The cardboard app lets users watch YouTube and Check out Google Street View or Google Earth, along with other demos that are supposed to be immersive. You do have to put your own cardboard viewer together, but Google provides directions to put together the viewer, which is made from cardboard and Velcro and magnets and lenses. And I think I'm holding Gina Trapani's right now. And I have to say, cardboard or not, this is pretty cool. Virtual reality. This is the future, everybody. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss our morning news program. If you do, you're missing out. It's Tech News Today, tomorrow, and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.